Why, if the Quran is the word of an omniscient God called Allah, was it revealed in seven modes? Why seven modes? Will you explain? This is a question that every thinking and inquiring mind should ask whether they are believers or unbelievers. After all, the Hebrew Bible, the New Testament, the scriptures of the great civilizations of India, China, Persia and others were all in one version. Why did Allah, if he were the same as the God of Israel and Jesus, need to reveal the Quran in not two, three or four modes, but seven? Incredibly, the answer to this question, based upon the records of Muhammad and Islam, is astoundingly simple. To start with, the pagan Arabs were mostly illiterate and very rarely had the facilities or the wherewithal to put down in writing the verses of the Quran. Most of the Quran had to be memorized by those who were attending Muhammad at any one time. Since Muhammad had to inform some of his immediate followers of his alleged revelations at different times, in different places, to different companions, over the incredibly long period of 23 years, it was impossible for him to keep track of the verses, their contents, and to which surah they belonged. He was giving different versions of a verse to different companions at different times. This caused, of course, dissent, consternation, infighting, and bewilderment among his followers. When these companions exchanged recitations, each believing that he had the correct and obviously the only true version, they started fighting and accusing each other of error or fraud. They, of course, had no other recourse but to ask Muhammad for the true version. When Muhammad heard the two or more versions, he told them that all are correct. Muhammad escaped this dilemma by informing his gullible and ignorant followers that the Quran was revealed in seven different ways, modes, versions, or dialects. Thus, at a stroke, the sincere and truthful apostle of Allah covered all his lies and deception with this very simple but convenient answer. Why seven modes? Because seven is a holy number in the Bible, and hence Muhammad used it incessantly in the Quran and Hadith. Allah, who gave the Torah to Moses in only one form, had to give the glorious and inimitable Quran in seven different ways. Our listeners should be reminded that many of the memorizers of the Quran perished in the earliest battles of Muhammad and Islam, before the Quran was finally collated and collected in book form. Hence, even according to the hadiths, innumerable verses were lost in that way as well as in other ways as detailed in our compilation of the Quran, chapter 36. Sahih Muslim Hadith 1787 narrated by Ubay ibn Ka'b. I was in the mosque when a man entered and prayed and recited the Quran in a style to which I objected. Then another man entered the mosque and recited in a style different from that of his companion. When we had finished the prayer, we all went to Allah's Messenger and said to him, This man recited in a style to which I objected, and the other entered and recited in a style different from that of his companion. The Messenger of Allah asked them to recite, so they recited. He expressed approval of their efforts, and there occurred in my mind a sort of denial which did not occur even during the days of my ignorance. When the Messenger of Allah saw how I was affected, he struck my chest. Whereupon, I broke into a sweat and felt as though I were looking at Allah himself. He said to me, Obey, a message was sent to me to recite the Quran in one dialect. And I replied, Make things easy for my people. It was then conveyed to me for the second time that it should be recited in two dialects. I again replied to him, Make affairs easy for my people. It was again conveyed to me for the third time to recite it in seven modes. It is obvious then that Muhammad's Allah was incapable of knowing that the followers of Muhammad were such simpletons that they needed the Quran to be recited in seven different ways for them to comprehend it. Muhammad's all-knowing Allah did not know their weaknesses. No truly divine supreme being could fail to know the weaknesses of his own creation. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 3.601 narrated by Umar bin al-Khattab I heard Hisham bin Hakam bin Hizam reciting Surah Al-Furqan in a way different to that of mine. Allah's Apostle had taught it to me in a different way. 
so I was about to quarrel with him, but I waited till he finished. Then I tied his garment round his neck and seized him by it and brought him to Allah's apostle and said, I have heard him reciting Surah Al-Furqan in a way different to the way you taught it to me. The Prophet ordered me to release him and asked Hisham to recite it. When he recited it, Allah's apostle said, it was revealed in this way. Then he asked me to recite it. When I recited it, he said, it was revealed in this way also. The Quran has been revealed in seven different ways. So recite it in the way that is easier for you. Sahih Bukhari Hadith 4.442 Narrated by Ibn Abbas Allah's Apostle said, Gabriel read the Quran to me in one way and I continued asking him to read it in different ways till he read it in seven different ways. Al-Tirmidhi Hadith 2215 Narrated by Ubay Ibn Ka'b Ubay told of Allah's Messenger meeting Gabriel and saying, I have been sent, Gabriel, to a people who are unlettered, among whom are old women and old men, boys and girls, and men who have never read a book. He replied, the Quran Muhammad has been sent down in seven modes. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember that the people of the book, the Israelites, when they left Egypt, were also unlettered. But the God of Israel did not need to recite the Torah to them in seven different ways. It was exactly because of these various versions of the Qur'an that Uthman bin Affan, the third Khalifa, allowed only one Qur'an to exist by burning the six other versions. Since Muhammad accepted and allowed the seven variations of the Qur'an as agreed upon with Allah through Gabriel, no mortal should have had the right to burn any of them as each one was supposedly divine. This unilateral act of his caused a rebellion and dissension among the Arabs that ended with his murder. This sacrilegious act nullifies the unfounded and totally spurious claims of the followers of Muhammad that the Quran was never changed or tampered with. In defiance of the reports in most of the books written by the earlier Muhammadan exegetes that show otherwise, all the above illogical, sacrilegious and unacceptable anomalies can be instantly resolved when our listeners realize that the Quran in its entirety is a product of Muhammad's imagination, his own alter ego, but cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme rock god of the Quraysh, thus giving his alleged revelations the authority of divine sanctity.